Good to see you. Yeah. First time here? First time here. JD is kissing my ass. He wants my support. So. I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. They're waiting for one race. You know, we've endorsed Dr. Oz. We've endorsed JP, right? JD Mandel. We're effectively run in this country by a bunch of childless cat ladies. Calling yeah. you weird. Does that hurt your feelings? How do you feel about that? <laughs> uh, no, not at all. It doesn't hurt my feelings. JD Vance is facing the sack. S A C K. Uh, this is probably the uh, Trumpy Trump, MAGA, Steve Bannon, the real great replacement theory that they uh, they don't want to talk about too much. But it's so obvious there is zero chance that the man who doesn't even know how to order a donut without making himself look like a total buffoon is going to be ahead of um, the Kennedy that the Kennedy family don't really like to talk about. He's kind of like a conspiracy theory wrapped all up in one worm. Or oh, is that a bad joke? But anyway, uh, the guy that Trump has brought along now is, is, I don't know what his role is, but there's not room for three of them. There really isn't. So I think uh, the October surprise, and by the way, they agree with me on MSNBC. Uh, they were discussing this and don't think I took the idea from MSNBC because I mentioned this some time ago. By the way. But anyway, what are your thoughts? Yeah. Do you think, um, you know, Kennedy is going to boot out Vance? Do you care? Because let's face it, Tim Walls is clearly the best VP. If you were to put all three of them on stage, he'd take down two at the same time. Easy. Uh, the zoo has come to town. Thank you for letting us come in here. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, man. Okay. She, 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 she doesn't want to be on film, guys, so just cut her out of anything. appreciate that, man. Um, I'm Katie Vance. I'm running for Vice President. Good to see you. Okay. Um, how long are you working? I've been here since uh, the beginning of July. Okay. But this year. Okay, good. How about you, sir? Uh, uh, almost two years. Okay, good. Just everything. Yeah, it'll be a lot of glaze, tears, some sprinkle stuff, some of these cinnamon rolls, just whatever makes sense. How long has this place been around? About four years. About four years? Okay. How long have you been here? Uh, a little over six months. Okay, good. We really came just to go to runs and then we did a little rally on the side when we had a little Amazing. extra time. Amazing. So if you don't know, the iconic Nebraska restaurant is the Runza. Don't call it anything else except for Runza. The bread consistency, all of it really matters. I got the uh, Swiss and mushroom is kind of a classic. The cheese is, is solid. Uh, you can be a little bit creative, but uh, this is it. If you're going to go to Nebraska, if you're going to go to a Nebraska football game, um, if you're just going to be a good person, you stop at runs. I think it's the bread consistency. I mean, you're your own made every day. Yeah. Get this guy on TV for runs. Us. Thanks for the work you're doing. Matters. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. Pleasure to meet you all. Wow. Joining me now, Maya Wiley, president and CEO of the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. Jennifer Rubin, Washington Post opinion writer and author of Resistance, How Women Saved Democracy from Donald Trump. And Barbara F. Walter, author of How Civil Wars Start and How to Stop Them. Thank you all very much for coming back to the Saturday show. Okay, so we got to talk about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. so we can stop talking about Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Maya, um, what impact is this going to have on the 2024 race? Very, very little except it does give the Harris campaign a lot of opportunity for a lot of more, a lot more attack ads. Uh, having sat in a House congressional hearing with Kennedy Jr. on vaccines and on the conspiracy theories that he spread around those, I can tell you that I think you can expect the word weird to continue to circulate from the mouths of the campaign and its supporters when it comes to being able to take on any kind of sense that this is something that may, might change the dynamics of this race. I mean, and we know from polling that about, you know, <clears throat> frankly, Kennedy uh, supporters were not very strong supporters. They were not deeply committed to him. And that both Harris and Trump really kind of divided up his constituents. So I don't think this will have much impact at all, except in attack ads. Uh, Jennifer, speaking of polls, so um, um, this is an average of national polls. I'm going to put this up here on the screen. You can, you can see there, um, before Vice President Harris took over the top of the ticket, 
you know, with Kennedy in the race, Trump w was leading President Biden. Um, now with Vice President Harris at the top of the ticket, she's leading Trump with, with, with Kennedy in, in, in the race and with him out of the race, it's just a two-way race, she gets a bump up. What do, what do you make of this? Well, I think the more people know about Bobby Kennedy, the more people who are sane will not want to vote for him. I think he is a perfect match for Donald Trump. And in fact, if I were J.D. Vance, I would uh, stick by the phone because he might be just the kind of guy that Trump would pull in as an October surprise. Oh he is freakish in every sense of the word, whether it's picking up bear roadkill or eating a barbecued dog. But much more seriously, he's a nut. He is a conspiracy nut. He's a racist. He has come up with all of these cockamamie theories of uh, persecution. In that sense, he's very much a Trump um, rather than a Kennedy. And I have to say, it's a very sad denouement to the Kennedy uh, legacy. And I think his family is justifiably very embarrassed and um, really ashamed of him. You know, Barbara, does, does RFK Jr.'s endorsement, especially given, where, given who his family is, does his endorsement of Trump, I mean, does this play into the other, you know, autocrat playbook. I, I mean, I'm trying to understand why Donald Trump so desperately wants RFK Jr.'s support. You know, I, I think Trump wants to win, and anybody who could give him votes is somebody he's going to embrace. And RFK, I think, in addition to being weird, it's also opportunistic. Um, you know, I, he, he contacted the, the, the Harris administration to see if there was a place for him in their administration. Yeah. Um, he's clearly hoping that he can get something if, if Trump wins. Um, and and it, he's a really interesting character. Um, the Harris administration wants nothing to do with him. And if we talk about voters, it's because most of the left-leaning voters who were um, likely to vote for Kennedy have already gravitated over to, to Harris. Mm -hmm. So the ones that are left are either people who aren't going to vote because they truly are independents, or they're already Trump-leaning, and they're, that's where they, they're going to go. He's off the ballot everywhere except, interestingly enough, Michigan and North Michigan. Carolina. Those are swing states. Michigan is a key state. Trump has been campaigning there um, in the last in the last few days. Um, that's a key state for Trump to win. And actually, having Kennedy on the ballot in Michigan probably hurts Trump. Um, so. It, Kennedy is a really weird guy. If he really wants to to help um, uh, Trump, I don't, I'm not sure this is the best way to do mm -hmm. it. You know, Barbara, let me stick with you since you mentioned that Trump's been campaigning in Michigan. I mean, he was just in Howell, Michigan, which in, back in July, which is just just last month, you had your know, far right wingers, white supremacists, marching through their streets, chanting slogans like "We love Hitler." We love Trump. Can you please, I mean, <laughs> what message is it sending? What message is Trump trying to send by going to a, a place that had had something so openly racist and vile happen on its streets? So I actually don't think Trump is in Howell because um, he wants to send a signal to white supremacists that he's one of them. Although Trump is definitely racist, and that is a very passionate part of his base, I think he's in Howell, Michigan, for very, very practical reasons. As I said before, um, uh, Michigan is key. The, the closest margin of victory in the 2020 election between Biden and Trump was in Michigan. And the election in November is going to be decided by, um, by swing voters in swing states. And Howell, Michigan is in Livingston County. Livingston County is outside of Detroit. It is the classic suburb with the swing voters that Trump needs to win. So, and he's in Howell because it's the biggest city in Livingston County. So I 
think there are two stories here. One is, yes, this plays into the the story that, that Donald Trump wants to tell his base, that he is one of them. Um, but it also, he has to win these votes, and he has to go to places like Livingston County. Um, and, and, and avoiding Howell would be giving up on some of those key voters that he needs. I'm Kamala Harris. How oh, you nice doing? To meet, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Good luck on this, uh, this campaign. Thank though. you. I need your help. We need you. Okay. We all, all right. need each other. Yeah. We all need each other here. We have a block party. Okay. I can tell you got a lot of friends. I'm gonna give you a few. I got, I got <laughs> a few friends. I know you do. We gotta make sure everybody's registered. Yeah. Make sure everybody's registered. We got the box up there. We talk yeah. to them about it. We talk to a lot of kids about it. That's our job. What are you hearing? Right what are you hearing? What are, what are I can't stuff? tell you what I'm hearing now. I got to hear the barbershop talk. Are you that I'm going to start hanging out here? Are you that I'm going to start yeah, just might, hanging out in one of their chairs? You might have to bring in the people. Feel your kids for a cut. You know, know what I'm saying? Don't chill with us. I know. Yeah, I know. That's the only way to get it done. That's what really I mean, real life, true to, true to be told, a lot of people don't like to vote because they think that votes get stolen. You know, That's the way true. we get done when we vote. That's real. It's hard to convince somebody to go out there and do that. Yeah, that's so real. we need somebody to stand up yeah. for what we believe in and know what we're going through. You know that's what I'm saying? Right. They can't just ride through here, stop in for a second, and then don't come back after right. they get elected, and that's what happens. That's they right. come, they chill with you until they get elected. Yeah. Then once they're back. elected, they don't even know you no more. Yeah. Walk right past you. So yeah. you know, we just need people that's going to stand up and do what they say they're going to do. That's right. You know what I mean? That's right. It, you're right. And it's about also people feeling that they're being ignored and beat down. And so they think, well, my vote doesn't matter. But, you know, there until we change the system, there are two groups that have power in elections, like just straight talk. Right. People who write checks and people who vote. Yeah. And so we got to remind everybody that they got to vote because that's power. Mm -hmm. There's real power in voting. There's so many signals that suggest that your vote doesn't count. Right. But it won't count if you don't vote. Yeah, I don't vote. All right. All right, help now. You out. Okay, I'm counting on you. I'm counting on you. What I know is, is that people like J.D. Vance know nothing about small town America. My town had 400 people in it, 24 kids in my graduating class, 12 were cousins, and he gets it all wrong. It's a not about hate. It's not about collapsing in. The golden rule there is mind your own damn business. Their <laughs> policies are what destroyed rural America. They've divided us. They're in our exam rooms. They're telling us what books to read. And I think what Kamala Harris knows is bringing people together around the shared values, strong public schools, strong labor unions that create the middle class, health care that's affordable and accessible. Those are the things. You look what they're talking about. They went right to division. They, they did not give us a plan on health care. Donald Trump talked about infrastructure. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris built bridges, built roads. So I think this is going back to the bread and butter, getting away from this division. We do not like what has happened where we can't even go to Thanksgiving dinner with our uncle because you end up in some weird fight that is unnecessary. <laughs> and, and I think yeah. bringing back people together, well, it's true, these guys are just it weird. Is. And, and it it's, you know, they're, they're running for He-Man Women Haters Club or something, that's what they go at. That's not <laughs> what right. people are interested in. And there is angst because robber barons like J.D. Vance and Donald Trump gutted the Midwest, told us we didn't do that. They talk about private schools. Where in the heck are you gonna find a private school in a time of 400. Those are public schools. Those are great teachers that are out there making a difference and gave us an opportunity to succeed. That angst that J.D. Vance talks about in Hillbilly Elegy, none of my Hillbilly cousins went to Yale and none of them went on to be uh, adventure capitalists or whatever. It, it's not who people really are. So I think that message doesn't resonate. You saw it yesterday. The energy out here exploded. We all broke fundraising records, but that's not what I look at. Door knocks are full. Mm. Uh, phone banks yeah. are full. People are talking mm. about what's possible. We are finally on offense about an America where we're all together. So good. Have Orban down to Florida. The vice president <laughs> will come out here and stand in a Planned Parenthood. Yeah. She stands in a Planned Parenthood clinic in St. Paul. That's what people want to see. Well, first of all, I don't buy that, Laura. I think most suburban women care about the normal things that most Americans care about, right? They care about inflation. They care about the price of groceries. They care about public safety uh, in the streets where their kids play. Look, as Donald Trump has said, he wants the American people at the state level to decide abortion policy. And you compare that to the Democrats who want to do nationalized, taxpayer-funded abortion up to the moment of birth. I think Donald Trump is actually trying to identify the reasonable compromise where he lets California 
figure out its abortion policy. Alabama and Ohio figure out their abortion policy. That is actually the common sense approach, and it's the approach that's most respectfully of the American people. So many lies in there. We'll get to that. Harris's running mate, Governor Tim Walz, hit back at Vance's remarks in a post on X last night, writing, it's pretty normal to respect a woman's right to make her own damn health care decisions. And someone might want to tell J.D. Vance Simone that there are no abortions right up to the moment of birth. This is a lie that they use in this argument to deflect and break down the conversation because what they don't want to deal with is the fact that abortion is health care and that a woman with an ectopic pregnancy or a non-viable pregnancy can be sterilized if she does not get the health care she needs. And women do want normal reactions from doctors when they need abortion health care, not doctors that are afraid of new laws that bring them back to the dark age and either have them bleeding out at home or becoming sterilized. That's all. They're just simply hoping that they could have health care. So I hope that JD at some point takes a look at what abortion is. It is health care. And nobody's doing an abortion in the ninth month or when the baby is out of the body, as Donald Trump says. I mean, not only they're idiots, but it's it's beyond insulting after what Donald Trump and his Supreme Court picks have done to women's health care in this country. Absolutely, Mika. I mean, here, here to everything you just said. As a, as a former campaign staffer, it really makes me wonder, like, what are the preps? Who is speaking to Senator Vance before he goes out and says things such as this? Because it flies in the face of the reality that people all over this country, women and men,